All right, so we'll just jump right into it. Uh, here we have a biome map. It's the world map and our biomes are labeled. First, we'll talk about the tropical rainforest labeled here in dark green. These are found mostly around the equator. Um, they have about 50% of Earth's species and they have poor soils, but they're super rich in rain and precipitation. Some of the rainiest places and the wettest places on the planet. Uh, next in the light green, these are also found in between about 15 degrees um, longitude or latitude, I mean, um, but they also get a lot of rain. They're a little bit less rich in species than the tropical rainforest. These are our seasonal rainforests. As we move out from the equator, we'll see these gray areas start to pop up more and also these pink areas. These are our deserts and our temperate shrublands. Um, these are gonna, both gonna be more dry and less rich soils. They're also gonna be a lot less diverse in their um, species. We'll continue moving out from the equator, and as we see more in the northern hemisphere than the southern, we have these brown areas and these yellow areas. These are temperate grasslands um, and our temperate forest areas. So these brown areas, as you see in like the eastern part of the United States, Europe, and Japan, um, will have very moderate climates. They're going to be um, pretty easy to live in. They're going to be very seasonal. And then we'll keep moving further up and we'll see our boreal forest, our blue areas, our tundra, and then as we move all the way out um, at the bottom and at the top, we'll have Greenland, which is basically just ice, and that's what the white represents, and then also Antarctica. If we pan over to the left of the map, we will see this kind of strange looking contraption, but this is actually one of the most vital things in determining the world's biomes. These are Hadley cells. Well, they're Hadley cells, feral cells, and a polar cell up there at the very northernmost point. These actually control how wind really moves on the planet. It's also really what controls how these biomes form. This first cell, the Hadley cell, it allows low pressure to rise up in the equator and drop tons of rain. This low pressure moves into high pressure zones, higher up, and then it comes out around 30 degrees latitude, where we see all our deserts, and this high pressure creates a very dry, dry environment to where there's not very much rain. This again, this rotates through the ferro cell, creating this like middle part around 45 degrees uh, latitude where you have these very temperate, moderate climates as winds moving and not staying still. You don't have a very like centralized high pressure or low pressure zone. It's just a pretty temperate, moderate climate. And then we see this as we hit this polar vortex as we go farther north, we hit this very cold region where we have these cold winds that circulate year round and keep this area very, very cold. We look at these Hadley cells over to our left and it's these that drive our ecosystems and they drive our biomes and drive the formation and the winds that shape the earth. And though we only show the northern half, there's also a southern half. It's exactly the same, it's repeated. That's what we also see um, pretty much similar things as we move out from the equator. Um, I do want to point out one thing. As we see this desert down here around uh, 45 to 75 degrees uh, south on latitude, we have this kind of um, out-of-context desert region. This is from the rain shot effect of the Andes, which is this mountainous strip right here. Um, and this is a thing that, wants to, that I want to show as these Hadley cells and these feral cells, they don't create all of our biomes. They, it's kind of a caveat. There are things, there's other influences, there's coastal regional zones, there's the way that the currents move, all these other things that do influence, but the Hadley cell is the driving force. They create convection currents of air in our atmosphere. You have the Hadley cell from about zero degrees latitude to 30 degrees latitude, where you move these areas of low pressure up and you have tons of rainfall around the equator. You have the feral cell that starts at about 30 degrees and ends around 75 degrees latitude. And it creates a pretty good temperate zone around the 45 degree region. This area has relatively low pressure and ample precipitation throughout the year. As we move a little bit further north, we see our final cell, the polar cell, which has high pressure all year. There's not a lot of rainfall, but it's super cold because of the way that the sunlight hits the poles. It's not very direct and therefore have a, have a much colder temperature. Thank you guys so much for watching our video about Hadley cells and their effects on the biomes. Um, I hope you learned something and have a great day.